We bless the name of the Lord in this place. Uh, so stand on your feet uh, and give God a worthy praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give God a worthy praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, and his praises uh, yeah. shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I am here to welcome you all today to word of faith. Hallelujah. Word of faith. And today is a special day because we are celebrating our shepherds on today. We are celebrating our pastors who lay prostrate for us. We are celebrating our pastors today who make many sacrifices for us. We are celebrating our pastors today who show up when we need them to show up. So give God praise for them. Bless the Lord for them. Give him glory for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Social media, we welcome you to tag in with us on today as we worship and praise God for all he has done, for all that he is still getting ready to do. Because there is a shifting going on. And I don't want you all to miss the shifting. There is a shifting going on. And I don't want you all to miss the shifting. So even as we honor them on today, we want to honor the most of the most, the highest of the highest, which is our King, which is our Savior, which is our Lord. Because he's been all that we've needed. The I Am. He has been all that we needed him to be at one time. So bless, 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 bless the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Get what you need to get so that you can give God a worthy praise on today. Hallelujah. Here we are. We're here, God. We're here, God, to bless your holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. So let's get ready to be involved in praise and worship on today. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Come on, say to God, can you open up your mouth and give God a praise? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, out of your belly, can you open up your mouth and Shabbat the God that woke you up this morning? We're talking about the God that made a way. If it had not been for him, where would you be? We would be like a ship without a sail, tossing to and fro. But I am here in the house of the Lord with the activity of my limbs. I got breath in my body. Nobody didn't have to wake me up. Nobody didn't have to put shoes on my feet. Nobody didn't have to check me in into a mental hospital. I give God glory. Huh. I owe him this. Oh, I owe him this. If it had not been for him, I can't tell you where I would be. I'd probably be in a mental hospital right now. I'd probably be laid up in a bed right now. But it was his grace and his mercy. I owe God this. I owe him. You ought to high five somebody and say, I owe God this. I, I'm sorry. Even in the good days and the bad days, I, I still owe him this praise. He's, he's been too good for me. When I didn't have two pennies to rub together, somehow, some way, he made a way out of no way, and I owe him. Oh, see, y'all ain't never been broke before. <laughs> But because of his grace and mercy, I can declare in this house, I'll never be broke again. Because of his grace and his mercy, I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I don't care what the doctor said. You shall and what? Somebody ought to give them glory. Somebody ought to give a praise. I just felt another wind just hit this place. Somebody ought to give a glory. Somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give him glory. Somebody ought to give God praise. I know we came in here tired. It's been a long weekend. But God just sent another wind in this place. You ought to give God glory. You ought to give God praise. You ought to give God glory. You 
want to give God praise? God, I owe you. 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 You cover me. You cover me. You kept me. You kept me. And I owe you praise. Somebody ought to give them glory. Woo, God. I thank you for the wind that you just sent. Oh, somebody just grabbed their help. Somebody just called on. You want to grab on to your help. He just sent another wind in this place. Somebody ought to give them what it is first. God, we say thank you. You didn't give up on us. When we gave up on ourselves, you didn't let us go. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peace for sure. But she snatched me out of the enemy's hand. And I can stand here and say, God, I owe you. Is that all you got for him? I will bless him at all times. I will bless him at all times. And his praises shall be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. That the Lord, he is kind. That the Lord, he is merciful. I got goodness and I got mercy and it's covering me. His grace is running after me. His mercy is running after me. His goodness is chasing me down. And I give you glory. Oh. There's something about that name 
There's healing in that name. There's salvation in that name. There's deliverance in that name. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty good God. He's a mighty friend. He sits closer than a brother. When my pastor can't be there, he'll still be there. If I make my bed in hell, he's right there with me. He's right there with me. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. And I gotta say thank you. the songs that we practice but I say I hear the Lord say jump in I hear the Lord say jump in whatever you need is in the river jump in Nisi jump in word of faith there's a shift they take a place jump in
go let that sound be covered under the music release of worship in this place come on out of your belly let the rivers of his worship flow to him come on let it flow to him release that sound release that frustration in worship I promise he'll take care of you be not dismayed whatever be time God will take care of you We love you, Jesus. We adore your name. God, we apologize for coming here tired. As if you have not done anything for us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Because you owe everything. We owe you everything. Oh my God, we love you, Jesus. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together fall to me. Y'all sing it. Say, here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. You're my God. You're my God. Say you're all together lovely. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together worthy. All together wonderful. All together wonderful. wonderful. All to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to spell that. Here I am to say that you're you're my God. You're my God. Say you're all together lovely. All together love. All together worthy. All together wonderful. All together wonderful. Say here I am to worship. Here I am. Come on, lift your hands right here. Say, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're my God. Say, you're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. You're wonderful to me. Oh, 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 say, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. Say, I'll never know. I'll never know how much it costs. Just to see my sins upon that cross. Say, I'll never know. Say, how much it costs. Just to see my sins upon that cross. Cut the music. Say, I'll never know. Just to see my sins 
see my sins, see my sins. Upon, that cross. upon the cross. Say I'll never know. I'll never know. How much it costs cost to see my sins. Yes, Lord. Say that you're come on, sing no music, sing to the Lord. Say you're all together, all together, all together, wonderful, wonderful to me. Oh, consuming fire. Sweet perfume, his awesome presence now fill this room. Consume me, fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence now fill this room. Say, consume me. Consuming fire, say sweet perfume, sweet perfume. his awesome presence awesome fills his room now. Fill this room. Say this is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Holy ground. Say this is holy ground. This, this is holy ground. So come, so come, and I bow down. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you all together, all together worthy, all together wonderful, wonderful to me. So here I am. Here I am to work. You're my God. You're my God. You all together You're lovely. All together yeah. lovely. All together. All together worthy. Worthy all, all together, together wonderful to me. So we give you the highest praise. It's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your hand and tell the Lord, say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Out of my heart, I love you. Lord, I love you. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. Lord, I love you. See, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. 
Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Yes, I do, Lord. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Say, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. Oh, we join in with angels and say, you're so worthy.
love on God right here and say then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my heart, oh, cry, oh, why, oh, no. Others that are called holy to not pass me by. Listen, I've been hit all week from hospital visits, from my daughter getting sick to breaking her finger to having surgery. I said, I'm crying. Say. Savior, oh God, Savior, why don't you hear my humble oh, cry? Oh, wow, oh no, there's a oh, There's some other people calling you. Say, do not pass me by. We're going to sing this one more time. Hey, I'm crying. Say, oh, oh, say, oh, why don't you hear my humble for cry? Wow, oh, oh no, the oh. oh. Lift your head and say, Do not pass me by. Somebody ought to say, Don't pass me by God. I know you got a lot of calls on you, I know a lot of people calling on you. I stretch my hands to thee and I say God do not pass me by do not pass my house do not pass my family wow on oh, others thou are calling you want to high five somebody and say he ain't gonna pass you by you said that by he ain't gonna pass you by I know it may seem rough night now, but he ain't gonna pass it by. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. He's right there. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Father, I stretch my hands. No other help I know. And I say, don't pass me by. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Lord, do not pass me by. Come on, come on, come on. Don't play with it. 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 To our YouTube and Facebook family, God bless you, God bless you. We're we, we just giving him praise, we're just giving him praise, we're just giving him praise. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you needed God to do something for you. And you see him working all around you, and then all of a sudden, you put the petition out, Lord, don't pass me by. I need it too. I, I appreciate what he doing for my brothers and sisters, so God, do that, but do for me too. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 We, our, our level of desperation when it comes to God has to increase. I, I believe that's the reason why some people don't get God to respond is because you don't know how to cry out to him. Oh, for whatever reason, we think that he owes us. So we don't know how to get our heart and our spirit in a submissive position to God. The thing that I admire about King David is not that he wasn't he wasn't a perfect man but he understood how to get back into God's good graces and most of all he knew how to get God's attention oh can you get God's attention can you do you know how to get God's attention do you know how to get God to to to, to respond to you glory to God Glory to God. Glory to God. And some, then some, then some. We, we still got too much pride. I don't want somebody to see me crying out to God. I, I, I told you, I am so far beyond people. I don't care what you think about how I look when it comes to getting God. That don't matter to me. Because I ain't doing it for you. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I just want to worship with those that know how to get God's attention. So when I cry out and you cry out and we cry out, we're getting God to move. tired of being in areas with people when they start crying out God is asking who that 
I want him to know my name. I need him to know my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you again to Word of Faith. We welcome you to Word of Faith. Hallelujah. This time our finance team is coming. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We honor you, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, and if there isn't one in the back of your seat, raise your hands and the ushers will provide you with an envelope. Hallelujah. For those that are watching, those that are here, there are three ways that you can give. Uh, you can do it in person. The address is there if you want to mail it, but you can give via Givelify and via Zale. The information is there. We're going to prepare our seed. Thank God for the move of his spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you are all excited about the Lord? How many of you all have an expectation from the Lord? How many of you all know that God has made you some promises that are yet to be fulfilled and you are waiting on the manifestation of those promises? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this point, we're going to ask all of our tithers, if you're tithing today, to stand. All of our tithers are standing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody that says, Pastor, we're going to stand with you of an offering at least of at least twenty dollars. You're standing. You're standing. Those that are watching us via social media, you too, you too should be giving. You should be sowing. Uh, you can give via Givelify or Zale. That information is there for you to give. You should be sowing. You should be sowing. You should be sowing. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. And I've learned, I've learned, I've learned that you can't just sow seed everywhere because not every ground is good ground. Oh. And so we sow seed everywhere. We give into this nonprofit, this organization, that organization, and you have yet to, re to uh, 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 produce a harvest or reap a harvest. At some point, you have to look back at your sowing and say, what's wrong with me? It's either, it's either me and my seed or it's the ground. And we need to learn how to sow into good ground. Everybody else, everybody else, get the best offering you have in your hand and stand, or stand to your feet. Get the best offering you have. Get the best offering you have and stand, stand, stand. Hallelujah, Jesus. I remember when I first started pastoring and how nervous I used to be about raising an offering how I used to be concerned about what, be, what people thought when it came to raising an offering. Now I'm sitting up here, I'm so comfortable, I can sit here and do this for an hour because I understand that your blessing is in your giving. Oh, let me try that again. Your blessing is in your giving. So when I hear Christians uh, uh, complain about not reaping and receiving, the first question I have is, have you been given? Because you will reap what you sow. And then when you get that thing going good and you're doing that thing right, some of us reaping 30, 60, and 100 fold of what we sow. All right. All right, I'm just saying. Just saying. Take that seat. Take that seat. Wave it before the Lord. Wave it before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, O oh God, for the seed. I thank you, O oh God, for this little that you have given me, O oh God. This little that you have given us, O oh God. And now, God, as we come back to sow, what was once little becomes big now. So, God, you take the seed that we're sowing, O oh God. You multiply it, O oh God, that it meets every need in the house of the giver and every need in this ministry. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. For it is not as a dead I owe, but as a seed I sow. We're going to start with the center aisles here. You can come to my right, your left. Follow the ushers. The ushers will lead you starting from the rear. Amen, amen, amen. And then you all that are on the sides, you're in the hands of the ushers. Follow the ushers. Follow the leading of the ushers. Come on out. And you can bring your seat. Jesus! 
Jesus promised he'll take care of me. ready to come back up with one final selection following our praise team we will hear from our very own minister Sharita Cromel when she comes to the stage I'm going to ask that you all stand and give her a big God bless you praise team is coming amen, amen. let's try this again <laughs> amen praise the Lord everybody amen Amen. We honor Pastor and Pastor Trika and Pastor Jonathan. Hallelujah on your appreciation. Amen. Love you all. I remember coming here. Y'all were at the old building. And I was into this, trying to get into this whole worship thing. And I was on the tour. And Pastor Trika pulled me aside. And y'all know how that went. Y'all know how that went. And I ain't never been, I've never been the same since. And I want to honor her for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The song says, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God I'll do that again I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Oh, cause all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life, y'all help me sing Cause all my life All my life you have been faithful Lift your hand and tell the Lord, say, all my life you have been. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Every breath that I am able. I'm going to sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, let's sing one bit, boy. Say, say, all my life. All my Lift your head and tell the Lord to you, oh my life. Oh my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I every am able, breath that I am able. I'm gonna 
see of the goodness. I got another way, Jay. And I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. I will enter. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day. Watch this. I will sing of the goodness of God. Hey, and I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my I will enter his court. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day. I will see, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, 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 oh. cause all my life you have been faithful. So all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Lift your hand and say, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness, it's running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I kill you. Goodness is running after. It's running after. Oh my God, we can't do this. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness, it's running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I lift my hand and say, I surrender now. God, I give you everything. Your goodness, it's running after. It's running after me. Somebody ought to give God glory. Somebody ought to give God praise. We exalt your holy name, God. We adore your holy name. We lift you up, oh God. We magnify your name because your goodness, it keeps running and running and running after me and running and running after me. Yes, Lord. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Come, I dare you to look at somebody and say, Your goodness is running after. Come on, encourage your neighbor. Your goodness. Your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, your goodness is running.
my life lay down. I surrender. I kill you. Come on, tell yourself. When my life lay down, I surrender. I kill you. Hold on, let me hit him. When my life. When my life lay down, I give you everything. Come on, when my life, when my life lay down, your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. Can't you see it? Your goodness is running after. Can't you see his goodness running? That means he's chasing after you. Your goodness is running. He's chasing after you. I dare you even in there. Hey, on double high. See, somebody caught on over here that his goodness, his mercy. His kindness, his everlasting love, his goodness, no goodness of our own, but it is the Lord's. Do- yes, Lord, I'm going to bring myself back. As y'all know, we can stay there all day. But your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, one more time, say your goodness. It's running after me. With my life. With my life lay down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running It's running. It's running after me. Now respond to God's goodness. Now respond to God's goodness. Respond to God's greatness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. All the blood. All the blood of Jesus. Come on, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust sister Tamika I dare not trust the sweetest frame but it says holy lean on Jesus name. who are you leaning on this morning oh my God who are you leaning on this morning oh Christ the solid rock will stand all of the ground all of the ground I'm talking to you ground all of the ground this is holy ground all of the ground is sinking saying so it says my hope is built on nothing less then Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. I heard this in my spirit all week. But holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. <laughs> See, we don't say these no more. Is sinking sand. See, we don't say these no more. All the blood of Jesus. Blessings to my sister, Psalmist. Vernicia. Child, I was crying when I first walked in. Been crying for like two weeks straight. Oh, the blood 
Oh, Jesus, it was just why. And I'm just getting myself calm. Come on. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Oh, my goodness. I feel his mercy. How great thou art. See, somebody catching on. Then sings my soul, my Savior. The God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Okay, so we, okay, we got to remember his greatness. Yeah, we got to remember his faithfulness. We just said, we think of the goodness of Jesus. But what is your response to his goodness, his greatness, his faithfulness? Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated all across this building. Before you sit down, stand back up real quick. Sorry. Before you sit down, we are here today. We are here today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing, we will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in him. But today we are also celebrating our pastors of this ministry, of Word of Faith Christian Ministries, Pastor Jonathan, and wherever she is, Pastor Trika Brown. Y'all come on and give them a clap. We'll learn the honor honor restores honor gives life honor they pour into us daily hallelujah let's give our online worshipers they're there i'm sure come on y'all clap for our online work our online ministry uh, church our online sanctuary got it the sanctuary the cyber sanctuary they're here and so we want to honor the lord and next next thing I want you to do is look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm so glad you're here say neighbor I'm so glad that God saved you neighbor I know that it may have been hard to get here but what deposit are you putting in today uh oh uh oh oh my say neighbor I came because it said if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Oh my God, I'll draw all men. Whoa, 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 I, I felt that thing down in my belly. Woo, my God, we got to want to be drawn. We got to want to be drawn to him. Not just drawn to our pastors, but drawn to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So say again, neighbor. Say neighbor. Why are you here? Now, if they give you a good answer, then tell them I love you. If they don't give you an answer, tell them I still love you anyway. <laughs> yes, Lord. All right, you can be seated at this point. I think I got all of that out the way. Because I'm telling you now, the Lord is here, and his mercy endure forever. I'm telling you, I know the Lord is here. Stay right there, AJ. Don't go nowhere. Uh, I know for a fact the Lord is here. And it's the glory of the Lord. Oh, my Lord. The Lord promised. He said, Sharita, every time you walk into my sanctuary, the glory of the Lord will be there. And I, use, and I say, Lord, dwell among us. That's all I say. I don't know how. I don't know, I, I don't know what you're going to do. But dwell among us. And so I honor the Lord. Uh, this is a opportunity that is a very humbling opportunity. Um, everybody don't get to uh, preach on the pastor's appreciation. 
day. And when it came, I said, what? <laughs> I said, mighty God. And so I said, well, Lord, uh, if you leave, I'll follow. Come on, y'all don't heard it. If you leave, I'll follow. Yeah. Lord, if you leave, I will follow. Waiting patiently. Yes, Lord. Woo, let me leave that long. So I'll follow him today. I have a word that only God could give himself. And it's not only to encourage our pastors, but it's to get us all in alignment with what the Lord wants. Uh-oh. Oh, Jesus. I'm already nervous. I see everybody looking. Y'all got me looking nervous. I'm nervous. But I'm not going to be before you long. So as I was studying, uh, I came across this tidbit of information. Thank you, uh, Brother AJ. Come on, give our music minister a hand. I get the privilege to honor them. It's their minister of music. I know they'd be like, oh, please, you're not singing today. <laughs> but I honor them because they always come through, and the Lord allows each one of them to be used in how he wants them to be used. Y'all, come on, give a little better for them now. They serve every Sunday singing and playing and pushing you into purpose. Uh-oh, okay, let me come back. Take time when you can to pour back into them. On your time. All right, amen. All right, so let me go ahead and hasten on. Uh, according to recent studies, uh, 4,000 to 5,000 pastors quit each year. Uh, they don't quit because they have a lack of faith in God. They don't quit because they don't believe in the calling God has placed uh, on their life. Most don't even quit because of financial reasons. Uh, pastors quit because they are overwhelmed with mental exhaustion. Uh, pastors invest their whole life into people. They are making investments, such as standing in the middle of disputes and standing in the middle of gossip. Come on, my gossipers who talk and you all talking to your pastor, gossiping. And come on, counseling broken marriages. Uh, they're here comforting those who have suffered loss, right? They're here helping to navigate the waters of imperfect people with a desire to see each one thrive in their faith. They're here to see you go through your spiritual breakthroughs. And majority of them want to see you at your best. Amen. And so uh, all of this, hear me good, all of this, Pastor, while you're trying to battle your own flesh and grow in your own relationship with God. Am I in the house today? Because some of y'all, y'all want to wanna get on the pastors, but then are you living what they live in? Oh, oh, okay. All right. I'm just, I'm, I'm just the servant of the Lord who's going to give what the Lord said, Pastor, and I'm going to sit down. All right? You're standing here. You're like, oh, Lord, everybody looking to see what you're going to say. I'm going to say it. Okay? And it's okay because I got back up here with me. I want to honor my mother who is here today. <laughs> And I'm sure all my aunties and all kind of people watching, uh, amen. And then I just got back up. It doesn't matter. The Lord backing me up. Evangelist day up. Come on. Walk through here. So I began to pray and I said, God, all right. You allowed me to see this as I was looking some things up and I was reading into it. And he said, yeah, because I want you to be able to encourage your pastors. But at the same time, we need to help all of us understand that we must Write this down as your subject. We must make the right transactions. All right, we're going to talk about making the right transactions. So it was so, he didn't begin to show me it was such an eye-opener because then he sent me to the very occupation where our pastors started and invested their time working in as they were growing and maturing in the natural and in the spirit. Do you know what that occupation was? They were in what? Banking. And I said, wow, we're going to talk about making the right transaction. And I'm going to correlate it to banking. Stay with me, because some of y'all who are not good with your money, you didn't even understand what the bank was for. All right, here we go. Lord, have mercy. 
Let me, God, Jesus, I'm finna help bless us, Pastor, because we are investing in things that we don't even understand. Okay. All right. So here it is in the natural. Uh oh, somebody said, Lord, that's me, Jesus. So here it is in the natural. A transaction in the natural is any kind of action involved in conducting business or an interaction between people. So when you go to the bank, because see, some of y'all now forgot that it's actually a bank that you can walk into because you do all your online transactions. Oh, Lord. So you walk into the bank, you fill out a form. Y'all remember you used to have to go to the counter? You fill your withdrawal or your deposit slip out, or you got your paycheck, and you getting ready to deposit your paycheck, and you go to the line, you got to talk to the banker. Come on, the teller. Didn't you start there, Pastor? Yes, the teller. And then you got to tell them, this is what I'm here doing. I'm doing business. I need you to do this with my what? Money. You making a what? Transaction. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, I got the class with me today. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So an important business deal, because some of y'all, wave your hand if you're a business owner. It doesn't matter how you conduct, but you're a business owner. You have a business, right? So an important business deal can be called a what? Transaction. Why? Particularly because you're buying or you're selling goods. But you can call any exchange with another person a what? Come on, you know the word. There are transactions. We use it for money. We use it for ideas. You even email transactions, right? All right? And so here's what the Latin rule, because you know we, I'm, a little, I'm a teacher by nature. And so I go into the Latin. Now, we, I'm, <laughs> the Latin rule, transactim, okay, describes an agreement or accomplishment. And I had to make sure I understood what is the main purpose and general use of a bank. I'm going to help you right now, because some of y'all just thought the bank was the bank. No, the bank, because I need to, I, I, I said, uh, Minister Von Schell was like, well, wait, what is all this? Where are we going with this, Lord? You got me talking about a bank, but I got to tie this thing in the spirit here. I'm coming. Stay with me. And so a bank is a financial institution, and the primary role of a bank is to take deposits and make loans. Okay, a financial institution exchanges in transactions involving the movement of money or financial assets from one place to another. Am I lying, Pastor? Okay, I want to make, I got to talk to the bankers over here. All right, come on. Some of us use, have used these at banks. Come on, if you got a checking account, raise your hand. Uh oh, never mind. I don't never mind. Put your hand down because I thought about this because you know we got cash out accounts and stuff now, nah, and you don't really have checking accounts. Uh, if you know about a savings account, uh oh, now we're raising our hand like yes, Lord. CDs. All right, we'll do a class on that. Uh, money market accounts. We definitely got to do a thing on that. Uh, loans. Loans, that's including your mortgage, okay, your auto loan. Come on, some of y'all done took out a few personal loans. All right, here we go. This is the major one. Credit cards. Mighty God, some of y'all had them since you was 12. Stop playing. Come on, stop playing. You was 12 with a credit card. Because why? Your mama and all them started writing credit cards in your name. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And then it created a, a situation, Pastor, because your name was already discredited. Because of what you was attached to at your house. Oh, Lord. That one in my notes. Let me come back, Elder. Sorry. Sorry. That, that's when we're talking about this generation stuff here. You got a credit card already. You can't even use it. And your credit messed up by the time you 18. Huh? And you can't, get, you can't get a personal loan. You couldn't get a school loan. You couldn't get nothing all because your parents and your family decided to use your name. Okay, I'm done with that. That wasn't even, that was for free. All right, so today I want to make and I want to focus on the part. Because I'm telling you, stop. Stop. You're discrediting your, your children. You don't know what you're bringing to your children when you're putting stuff in their name. When you need to fix your credit up, 
fix yourself up and make the right transactions. Amen. So I want to focus today really quickly on making deposits. All right. So I'm going to go here and stay with me. A deposit refers to money or assets held at a bank. And a bank is a what? Financial. Okay. All right. And so the bank holds uh, when a customer, you're the customer, we're the customer, right, makes a deposit, they place the money in the bank. And so the bank holds that money for the customer for a set amount of time under certain conditions. All right. So some of y'all. So you, it's certain conditions, Pastor. When, we, when, when you're making a deposit, it's certain conditions that we have to know about. It's certain conditions. And here are two types. Write this down because you didn't know. I'm trying to help y'all know about these financial institutions and how it's going to pertain to your spiritual growth. Two types of deposits. There is a demand deposit. Okay, that is more the more common type. That's kind of what we do. We do demand deposits. There's generally no limit on the amount of times you can make demand dep deposits, and you can withdraw money at any point from a demand deposit. That's most of our deposits that we make, all right? And then there is a time deposit. Mm, 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 mm. Time deposits must be held for a fixed amount of time before funds can be removed from a time deposit account. If they remove the funds too early, most of the time you're going to pay the bank a, a fee. My God. Some of us in trouble right now because you had what? A time deposit and you couldn't hold on to it. Get your 403B. I want to reach into it. Uh oh. Oh Lord. And I done reached it to it because I needed that money pass. It was, a, it was a crucial time. I done removed the money, and now I'm owing a fee. All right, okay. And so these two types of deposits, I said, the Lord said, Sharita, here we go. Most of us, we can handle and work with a demand deposit because we think we like things quick. We want it, and we want to have free access to get back what we have poured in and to have free range to withdraw it. But what happens is when it's a time deposit and because we are in a rush, we have little to no patience. And we don't think about the thought about what we may be losing when we rush into withdrawing too early. We don't think about the value, Psalmist Nisi, or the interest that we are gaining because we are withdrawing our deposits so quick or too soon. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, slow down. Slow down. Slow down. You got to make the right transaction. I'm just trying to help us. I'm just trying to help us here. And so, uh, so uh, how, how does all of this make sense to what we celebrate in the day with our pastors? What does, this, what does this have to do with it, with our living our everyday life? God, y'all don't like to be blessed, do you? And so I'm going to help you, though. All right, I'm going to help you because it helped me. Lord, I said, Lord, just to me, I'm going to go learn about money markets and put me some money in a CD and let it just sit there and let it grow and gain interest and gain value. Huh? And don't keep trying to tip and tap and move and go and I'm shifting this from over here and I'm shifting because I'm trying to make ends meet. I'm shifting over here and I got to run to my pastors over here. I need a little loan, pastor. And I got to go over here to the personal check cash in place and I got to ask them I need a little peace because I done ran out and I want no we got to live in wealth in total prosperity I'm gonna help you today all right okay I'm back thank you pastor thank y'all for being bankers that like worked out and if you notice uh we don't lack here even when it probably looked like it's short pastor we don't lack here. Why? Because you have been a faithful and diligent worker in the banking field. He had to, in the natural, learn it so in the spirit it would be easy. Uh-oh. All right. Let me, let me come back. All right. 
All right. Woo, so our pastors, all right, okay. Oh, and is it ironic that Pastor Trika was working in banking? He didn't bring, she didn't brought, I mean, right? To, am I telling you, because y'all done told the story, she was in banking and then bought Pastor Jonathan alone. He was kind of taught you the ropes, I believe. Did you, am I? <laughs> That's my, yeah. <laughs> and then now he like a master banker. Uh, I may have to do some little, some little uh, courses, <laughs> money management. And the only way you can be fruitful and multiply is you got to know how to manage your time, manage your money, manage your household, and it all work together for total prosperity. I'm talking, sorry, Pat. I keep coming over here, but I'm just talking to you. I'm trying to help you here because they are, they, as long as they can hear me. All right, okay. All right, I'm coming somewhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help. I'm going to help bring all this together in about, give me 15 more minutes, guys. And so here we are talking about making the right transitions. And so our pastors have been given a charge. They were given a charge. When the Lord called Pastor Jonathan, he gave him a charge. And the charge was to do spiritual transactions. Do spiritual transactions, uh, executive pastor why with us as children of God he had to get the charge to know how to spiritually transact us right and so here we are making deposits and withdrawals we making deposits and withdrawals in the natural and in the spiritual spiritual realm every day how do we make deposits in the natural well we go we make a deposit online they fancy now you get you a check, you ain't got to go to the bank no more. You put that thing down, you ch ch take a picture, it go to your account. They made it real convenient, right? It's no reason why your bank account should be overdrawn when you can really just ch ch right there, okay? And if you real uh, into it, please get direct deposit, okay? They made direct deposit available. And then you can go in person. If you like my Auntie Lord, she probably watching, but I gotta say it. She is going to drive to the credit union and she gonna go with her slip and she gonna go and she gonna make that transaction in person. She said, like, I need to see what they doing. Right? She <laughs> period. I need to see what they doing. All right. And me, I'm like, why well, don't you can just go through the ATM? You can do it right at the ATM and get your money. I know I need to go to the bank. I need to take my paper and I need to walk up to them and I want that cash in that envelope. Come on. <laughs> Come on, huh? Y'all know some of y'all still doing it. That's why you're laughing. <laughs> still doing it. But it was they, 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 a convenient way of making sure that this money is being deposited and withdrawn out. Here, is how, uh, well, we, they used to be able to do it by mail, but some people got too clever. Pastor Bannister, and they sending it through the mail, and it wasn't making it. Somehow, the mailman didn't deliver it. Huh? And sometimes you get your envelope, and it's already open. Huh? So they say, don't even do that through the mail no more, because everybody not honest. Okay. So here's how we make deposits in the spirit we pray all times of day as a matter of fact the scripture says you should be praying without ceasing and if you don't know what ceasing mean that means don't stop that means pray all day you get up praying you're getting dressed pray when you walk out the house pray when you get in your car pray when you get on your job pray when you drop your children off pray you should be praying all day long because that's the only way you deposit in in the spirit okay now you should also be worshiping god in spirit and in oh okay i got some bible scholars in here why because if you worship in the spirit and truth it may not always be good but you're worshiping the father who gave it to you all right so here is what the lord said this is the lord saying not me all right some of us are making illegal withdrawals. <sighs> Some of us are making illegal withdrawals because we haven't deposited anything but trying to take everything out before time. How is your deposit going? How 
is it gaining any value or interest if you're taking it out before time? But I, 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 I don't understand why I ain't got this yet. I, I, I'm, I don't understand why my pastors ain't noticed me and seen me and made me this and made me that. Because you're trying to withdraw to... And get, thank you, Holy Spirit. And when you're withdrawing too soon and when you're making these illegal transactions, it's burning them out. Because now they're trying to help you instead of doing what the Lord say do. Okay, let me come back. All right. I'm just trying to help us, Pastor. It's okay. They may call you and say, well, I didn't like the way she said that. I'm telling you now, I don't care. You're making illegal withdrawals. And you ain't deposited nothing. You ain't helped do nothing. You ain't helping yourself do nothing. You ain't came and helped be nothing. And you're making all these illegal withdrawals. But you don't want to put it in your deposit. All right. Lord, let me. All right. Come back. All right. So, you know, me and my mom got this thing because she, she's like the master speaker, right? And it's like when we get hyped up, she, we start talking hard or something. And we start, it just elevates. And so let me come back. All right. Because I want to make sure you hear now. I want you to be hollering and screaming out and you still making illegal withdrawals. When you leave here, you shouldn't be making illegal withdrawals. Because now you go, classmate. Okay. All right. All right. So when we look into the spiritual realm, now come on with me. Come on. Look at your name. Say, come with us. Come with us. We're going in the spirit now. Tell them you shouldn't have never left out the spirit. But just in case you did, tell them, come on in. Come on. Because sometimes you got to snatch them back. They done looked at the time now, and they say, oh, we about done. I'm getting a little lunchy. Nope, tell them come back because we're going into the spiritual realm now here because I'm got to help you. We have spiritual transactions, and that is defined as an interaction. It can be an exchange, a covenant, or a relationship. All right? Okay. We go into the covenant right here. So I was so, okay, let me be honest. I said, Lord, how? do I make all this make sense? There's so many scriptures and things you could go into about covenant and what you could do. The Lord led me to a brief story. Sitting right here by Elder, and I said, Lord, Elder, now the Lord done gave me a scripture that I hadn't even planned on throwing in here, but I'm going to put it in here. All right, thank you for your prayers. So here is <laughs> a brief story that God, uh, he was sending a message, if you go with me to Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 15, and I'm going to just read from verse 12 through 15. I'll read, I'm talking from the King James Version, but when you at home and you look back through it, because y'all know I'm a believer that you go back home and you study what the preacher done preached or your pastors done said so that you know that it's a real thing. Okay, you get it on your own. So if you need to read the ESV, NLT, uh, Amplified, the message, you read what you need to read right now. I'm reading from King James Version. All right. And so I'm going to give a little background real quick. Uh, Azariah, the son of Oded, is about to give Asa uh, reassurance that the Lord is with him and that if he seek him, he will be found. And, and so Asa needed this reassurance that divine assistance was going to lead the people of Judea and Benjamin. Okay? So this is where we're going to pick up because now Azariah has given him this word of the Lord. Now that's a feeling all right. He's like, oh, I got some divine intervention. I am, I'm getting a divine assistance. Here is a spiritual transaction about to happen. And it says in verse 12, and they enter into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Let me stop there. They entered into covenant to seek the Lord. If you're going into covenant and you're not seeking the Lord, that's a problem. To seek the Lord God of their fathers, not just going, but with all their heart and with all their soul, 
that whosoever, watch this now, he ain't just telling you in covenant, he gonna let them know, whosoever would not seek the Lord, this is where some of us gonna get in trouble, we doing illegal withdrawals. If you're not seeking the Lord, it says the Lord God of Israel, you should be put to what? Death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And so in verse 14, they say, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judea rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. What kind of spiritual transaction? What covenants are you entering to? Yeah, just ponder that one second. Think on it. What covenants? Am I really seeking the Lord? As I had a, I had a task at hand, our pastors have an assignment to make spiritual transactions. And even sometimes they need reassurance that divine assistance is here. Okay. All right, y'all don't want to talk about that. Because why? They are in charge of making sure that we are seeking the Lord with all our heart and all our soul. Because if not, surely it says we will die. And we wonder why some of us start dying spiritually. And we are um, so in so much spiritual warfare. Yeah, are you, seek, are you in covenant? Who are you in covenant with? Is my covenant based on my pastors? Because they get their assignment. But, or is my covenant based on the Lord thy God? Who, okay, all right. Who is ruler and reign over everything. And if they are a direct connect of him, then our transactions should be the right transactions. I know y'all don't want to hear this kind of word. And so when you are transactioning, transacting with people, it's important for you to realize that you must use wisdom. Lord, have mercy, because if you don't use wisdom, you may say the wrong thing in the transaction. Be honest. Come on. See, y'all faking today. You will say the wrong thing in the transaction if you don't use wisdom. And so it's important that you use it. Wisdom, by definition, is the application of acquired knowledge, which means you can't act like you didn't know. Because some of us try to act like we don't know. I didn't know that. You done said in here. Why you didn't know it? You were sitting in the meeting. What you talking about? Why you didn't know it? You sat in here and heard pastor them preach a whole sermon. They done went, did altar call, lay hands, said the same message. How you miss that? It's acquired knowledge that helps you to use wisdom. And Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4 says, By wisdom a house is built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Come on, look around. Can't you see it? Don't, don't you see wisdom being used when things are happening? We use, pastors use wisdom. Leaders, you should be using wisdom. Anybody that's connected to the kingdom of God should be using wisdom. So in the spirit realm, there are transactions which take place always. And these are ways in which we deal with different things in the spiritual world. So in all these transactions, it means two parties, two things have to what? Exchange. And so when you look at prayers, you get requests, you make your petition known, but then you look for a what? An answer. Two things are what? In exchange, I'm petitioning, I'm asking God, I'm seeking why he may be found as seek and not, and I'm waiting for the Lord to give me a answer, spiritual transaction. Here we go, prophesying. Come on, y'all know y'all like to be prophesied to. And so they're declaring, they're telling you what the Lord says, but here's what happens when the prophecy comes. It's a declaration, but it also causes change. Here is the spiritual transaction. I declared it, and now I got to change. Whether good or bad, there is an exchange happening. When blessings, we say, uh, oh, windows of blessing are open, there is a sower. You have to pray. 
you have to believe, you have to sacrifice. And here is when you do all of those, then you receive a blessing, right? All right, there is a transaction. When you are preaching, when pastors and leaders and people who God is unctioning to preach and give the word, you're speaking the word of the Lord. But here's what's trans transacting. You should be encouraged. Okay? You're getting rebuked. Uh, you should be comforted. Okay? The joy of the Lord should become your strength as this word is being what? Preached. And then when you're witnessing, come on my evangelism and witnessing people, you're going out and you're witnessing and you're supposed to be recovering the laws and saving the laws and I charge to bring them in. And so here is, what is the exchange? You're giving them Jesus Christ. They should be receiving the Father. Come on, these spiritual transactions that you, you may have to do in the natural because you got to go out there to get them. You can't still be in here looking around. All right, let me keep going. So in these transactions, we should see more human to God interaction. Right? We're humans. They call us man, but we know we woman. Man, woman, right? We should see more interaction with God. However, most of the time, we give more attention and time to the man-to-man -man transactions until we don't even realize we have lost interest in our relationship with God. Because we so busy worried about this one and that one and the neighbor and this one. And well, I wonder what Pastor was doing. And da -da -da. Where is your relationship with the Father? Because He's going to take care of the other stuff. If you realize you're losing interest in your relationship with God, then we should be interacting with God in prayer. Right? We should be interacting in prayer. Paul wrote in Philippians, reminding us in Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7, be careful for nothing. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And again, guess what happened? Here is your response. And the peace of God. which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Because so we, we don't, need, we not, don't just keep my heart, Lord. Keep my mind. Because if my mind disconnect in the transaction, then I'm going to be losing interest. And so when I'm, giving, when I'm giving my tithes and my offering, Pastor, Malachi reminded me in chapter 3, verse 8 through 10, it says, Will a man rob God? <laughs> Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have, you, how have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions? You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe. Come on, y'all know y'all be cheating out. Oh, Lord. We got, I can only give so much because I got to go grocery shopping and I got to make sure I got enough for my nails and stuff for the week. I'm going to give part of what I can give. But it, my Bible said, bring the full time into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. That means I'm bringing it to the storehouse so that he going to increase and I'm going to receive the blessing. Oh, Lord. That should have convicted a lot of us right there. Yeah. I've been complaining, Lord. I ain't, I'm running out and I'm dry. And Lord. <laughs> but then it says, and thereby put me to the test. Oh, we don't want to be tested. No, it says that the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there's no more need. Amen. That's but I, what do I have to do? I got to make that transaction. The right one, I got to bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. You opening up your refrigerator and it's empty because you made an illegal withdrawal. <laughs> You withdrew from the storehouse 
and you didn't give what you was supposed to give. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. So praise and worship. Okay, I'm just giving y'all some things that we should be doing here. Praise and worship. Psalms 145 verse 2 said, every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Psalms 34 and 1 reminds us, we holler it out every time, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. These are transactions we should be making during praise and worship. Not based on the praise team. Not based on who's singing. Not based on who here. Not based on who I think anointed and not anointed. It say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And this praise shall, I should be coming in my car, praising him. I should be hitting the front door, praising. I should be worshiping him on my job. Hallelujah, I'm able to go to work today. Hallelujah, I got a little paycheck today. Hallelujah, you've been providing for me today. We coming in our jobs. We oh God, I don't even want to be here. Yeah, praise be the Lord that you have provided for me. They ain't say folks with our homes are living out in the street. And the drug habits, some say they just can't beat murders and robbers. No place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection, Lord. Every step of the way. That's praise and that's worship. Just trying to help teach y'all what you should be doing. Right here complaining and making these illegal withdrawals and pulling and you come in here and you pull on your pastors. You're pulling on all these people withdrawing. And all you got to do is make some deposits. That's all you got to do. Make a deposit. Okay. You waiting on somebody to tell you to make a deposit. Somebody got to tell me to go to the bank. Huh? I got $5. I'm going to the bank with it. Can I open up this savings account with this $5? Let it grow. Now, I don't know. If they, now you got to have at least 100 Don't go by me. <laughs> you used to do at least do $5. Then I'm up to it a little bit because it's going to take a minute for that $5 to grow. But it'll grow if you leave it alone. Put it in that time deposit. Okay, see, we learned something today. All right? And so remember when we're serving. That we should be serving and making right transactions. It matters. It matters. When you serving, it matters how you smile and greet when you're coming in the door. It I ain't just talking about the greeters and the ushers. Because we all should be servants of the Lord. When you walk in, you should be smiling and speaking. Hi, hello. Nice to see you today. Yeah, I may be, how, you know, they're like, how are you? And you know you be feeling a little kind of funny in your spirit. But then I'm all right. No, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's an illegal withdrawal. Mm-mm. Nope. You need to be given a good withdrawal. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm trying to make it. Dean's may be a little shaky from, but put some something into it. These people want to greet you and pray, and you giving them. Okay, go back out the door. All right. Let's try it again. Because that stuff brings when you deposit the wrong thing, when you walk in. That thing will suck the life. What to say? If you seek the Lord, you may be what? Found. But if you don't, you're going to be dead. That's what the word said. I'm just telling y'all what the word said. And it is a spiritual death. I ain't telling me you're going to die. We got to have a whole funeral over. You know what I'm saying is you're going to be spiritually dead. Some of us was dying spiritually. Why? Because we stopped seeking. Oh, all right. So as I come to my close, there is a term in banking called compounding growth. Oh, now, only the bankers know about this. I, I had to study this one here. Compounding growth. I'll help you if you don't know. It is a powerful investing concept that involves earning returns on both your original investment and on returns you received previously. For compounding to work, you need to reinvest your returns back into your account. Compounding relies on the power of time. Okay? On the power of time. Start saving and investing early. 
Why? Because you got to take the effort out of compounding, right, and reinvesting your earnings automatically. In terms, it means in turn, those earnings add to the value of your account. It boosts the potential to earn even more. And so what is the key? Guess what the key is, guys? Patience. Oh, Lord. I just knocked about 20 of us out because they're like, Lord, you tell me I got to wait? Yeah, wait on the Lord and be of good. And he said, I read, you got to have patience. Don't you, don't be trying to be tempted. You trying to withdraw the funds when they grow because you think you done got a little value. And you running trying to get it out. And, and, and now you done messed up because now you got to reinvest. Okay? So that your money will what? Grow. So that means don't take it out and don't take it back. Some of y'all be borrowing off. And you don't give back. Okay. All right. Let me help you. Some of y'all be borrowing from the church. And then you don't come back and give it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm not talking about here. Y'all don't do that here. No. Let me. Y'all don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> Keyword shouldn't be. <laughs> I was trying to make it light, uh, Pastor. But you see, if you do it, then you make an illegal withdrawals. I just want well, just helping us. Then we got the struggle to get you to give tithe and offering. But you didn't have a problem asking for it. Okay, that includes family funerals and family weddings and all of this. Now, give back. Make a deposit. Okay? And don't just, not just financial deposits, but show your pastors you want to serve. I may not have it financially, but I'll be here every Sunday standing at that door. Greeting and grinning. Bringing chairs in, whatever I need to do. You need me to clean? You need me to help do something? Give it back. All right. All right. Why? Because what does that have to do with us spiritually? And as we're celebrating our pastors who God has aligned us with at this moment in time, when pastors make their spiritual deposits, they expect to see growth. They are investing in the spiritual well-being of God's people. Which means if they withdraw too soon, the value of the growth may not be much, but it's something. All right? Which is why some pastors take their time to elevate us, whether it's in a title, leadership position, or in just making sure we are simply understanding what the word of God is instructing us to do on a daily living. And not just basing deposits off of our gifts and our talents. But they have to make sure that your growth in the spirit is sound. And that all the investments that God charged them to do, that the investments himself, he has already predestined. Plus, those made by others along the way. Because some of us, we came from other churches. Sometimes you go from a church to another church. Or, you know, you end up coming from off of when the evangelism, they done brought you into a church. So, yes. Some investments have been made by others. But guess what? It should still yield good fruit. If you connect it to the right transaction, it should yield good fruit. And so we see a return. As 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says, all scripture is God-breathed, given by divine, I'm reading the amp version, given by divine inspiration, and it's profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately. Some of you are doing illegal transactions in private. But this is public and private. Behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. Verse 17 says, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Do we treasure the gospel? How valuable are the deposits to you that are being made when it comes to the word being taught by our pastors? Do you really value the deposits that God has given you to do the work in the kingdom? Or are you bringing the value down because it was a faulty transaction happening? 
God told me to leave these three things for us to remember, and you can write them down as you will. As we continue to celebrate our shepherds of this house and other pastors, this was clergy month, and we're going into the holiday seasons, and, you know, it's a new year coming. It'll be here before we know it. We're blanking our eyes here. And it is a time for encouragement. It is a time for us to get it right with God. It is a time for us to deposit into them, deposit into each other, so that our walk with God is steadfast and unmovable. And so here's the first thing. Don't forget the value of the deposit. So y'all don't forget the value of a deposit. Number two, don't make premature withdrawals. Don't keep taking and you taking and you taking, but you never depositing or giving or pouring or building. And I'm not just talking about financially. You can speak a word. You can pray. You can give an encouraging card. You can tell when it's time to make a deposit. You can tell when the account is low. And so don't make premature withdrawals. And number three, gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as you are learning how to invest in things in the natural and spiritual realm. Our pastors and pastors around the world can only give and teach you what the word says. They can give you tools you need to put into practice. And then it's up to you to ultimately live the word in season and out of season. Don't get lost in the transaction. God is still the refiner. You can be standing all across this building. He is still the refiner. And he's making and he's molding us into what he wants us to be. And it's time for us to make the right transactions. I will be what you call me to be. I'll say yes. Lord, I agree. My desire is to be. I will be what you call me to be. I will be what you call me to be. I'll say yes. Lord, I agree. My desire is honestly to be what you call me to be. And that's what I'll be. And so we should want to be who God called us to be. As we make right transactions, lifting your hands all over the building. Come on, let God speak to you in this moment. Come on, let him speak to you in this moment. God, help me to make right transactions. God, don't let my withdrawals and my deposits be in vain. You gave it, and I honestly wanted to do what you gave it to do. Come on, some of us have, some of us have made illegal withdrawals. And some of us are still learning what deposits we need to make. So God, help us even in this moment. Come on, begin to talk to your Savior. Come on, you could be, a, you can, I can't, he talk to you, talk to your Lord, your King. And say, God, God, help me to make the right deposit. God, help me. That I don't withdraw too soon. God help me to make the right transactions. God touch my heart.
touch my mind. Touch my heart and touch my mind. Come on, if you will, just grab a neighbor, your neighbor's hand. I saw this very vividly. Just hold your neighbor's hand. I'm going to ask if, if, if y'all don't mind, if you all could come stand right here in the middle. Just you two come right here. I'm going to have uh, Pastor Cadogan to kind of come stand behind them. Okay. No, yep, just right here. Yep. Yep, that's good. You, yeah, you can face this way. Yeah. Let's go. And you just come right here behind them. All right. Let's make sure you connect them because it's almost like we're covering them. Let me help y'all see the vision. It's almost like we're covering them. So if it looked like a circle, make it look like a circle. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're holding somebody's hand. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes, we're connecting them. Come on up there, y'all get connected. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. So even as they're standing here, I want you to begin to pray that we make the right transactions. Your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Listen, in this moment, I, I really need you all to be in the spirit. It's not time to look to see what I'm doing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bind the spirit of illegal withdrawals. Yeah. Yeah, we bind every, every spirit of infirmity. Yeah, unspoken things. Yeah. Come on, you should be praying. And if you're an intercessor, you be, should be intercessing. Come on, if you see in the spirit, we bind everything that has tried to come against. Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Trika Bound. Yes, Lord. You be God in their life. You renew the strength, Jesus. You renew a right spirit, Jesus. You pour back into them as they give out to us, oh God. Forgive, forgive, forgive. We speak forgiveness, oh God. We speak forgiveness, oh God. We thank you now, oh God, that you are binding the family together. We thank you now because as they were seeking you, oh God, you were doing it for them. Come on, you should be praying. Yeah, you should be praying. Come on, it's a lot of closed mouths. Come on, you should be giving your pastor strength. Come on, they done prayed and labored. They done laid hands on you. Come on, speak strength to them now. Yes, God, a new walk. Yes, Lord, new vision. Yes, Lord, new ideas. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We hear you, Jesus. Yes, God. Give them insight. Give them spiritual insight. Give them insight on the next steps. Give them insight on the next move. Give them insight. Give them insight for their family. Give them insight for the next job. Give them insight for the next assignment. Give them insight, Father. You've been a kind Father. You've been a saving Father. You've been a gentle Father. So now, God, give them insight. Speak to their heart. Speak to their mind. Yeah, the whole shot that by. Speak to their heart. Speak to their mind. He on the boho side. You did a heart. See on the boho. Speak to the heart. Speak to the mind. Speak, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, God. Speak to the heart. 
Speak to the mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. As they've been seeking you, oh God. Yes, Lord. As they've been seeking you, oh God. They've been declaring they want more of you. More of you in their personal time. More of you in their personal time. God, for as they draw closer to you, you will make the right transactions. As they draw close to you, they won't feel the weight of the illegal withdrawals. Yes, God. As they draw close to you, things will begin to line up that they didn't even know needed to be lined up. And so God, now forgive us as a people. Forgive us for being stubborn, oh God. Forgive us for being selfish, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for not having patience, oh God. Patience as you give them the plan. Patience as you talk and speak to them on how to lead the flock. Patience, oh God. So now, God, let us be open to what you have for them. Let us pour back into them in integrity, in honesty. Let's pour back into them with strength, with power, with encouragement. God, for you know every personal battle. You know every personal thing, oh God. And it's not our business, but it's your business. That your will be done. That your will be done. That your will be done in their lives. And so now as we begin to celebrate their blessings, as we begin to celebrate, we ask that you will renew their strength, oh God. And we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all begin to magnify the Lord for them. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so if there's any, the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If there's anyone who feels led to join Word of Faith Christian Ministry, the doors of the church are open for you on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank our cyber sanctuary, our cyber sanctuary for being here. Come on, y'all give a hand clap for our cyber sanctuary. <laughs>